Hello everyone, Rich here, back for another video review for the Diecast F1 review and today I'm reviewing a black box. Well there is a model inside but uh, I'll get onto that in a minute. It's the Ferrari 412 T2 from the 1995 Formula 1 season driven by Jean Alesi and Gerhard Berger and it's the last of the V12 era Formula 1 cars. Actually it's the last V12 Formula 1 car full stop I think. It's the only car of that season to still run the V12 configuration whereas everyone else had adopted either V8 or V10s. It's a very attractive looking car as well. The last of the Ferraris with, well, let's say it has a low nose, but the 96 car had a low nose as well, but uh, that car was ugly in comparison. And a uh, quick rundown of the car's history. Of course, driven by Alesi and Berger throughout the 95 season. Reliability was so-so, and the car was fast initially, initially but... Uh, it was nowhere in comparison to the Benetton and the Williams that year. Only one win uh, for John Alesi throughout the year, or, th or for Ferrari throughout the year. John Alesi winning the Canadian Grand Prix, and because Damon Hill and Michael Schumacher both had reliability issues. Um, it pretty much sealed the fate of that one. Um, the car was never really in comparison to those two cars, and uh, it, it showed throughout the season. Pardon me, but uh, it was a frisky car. You look at it through. Look up YouTube video or look up on YouTube for a video of the car going around Monaco and qualifying, and the car was a real entertain entertaining thing to look at because of the way it power slides through the curves and that is a really, really uh, frisky looking machine to uh, drive by the looks of it. Uh, onto the box though of the model, it is very dusty. The Mini Chance version, by the way, or Paul's model art, of course, it's got Formel one on the top, the German word for Formula One of course. Uh, I think there should be a driver sticker there but uh, it's just blank. And of course, checkered flag and Formula One on that side. And then we've got the Paul's model art and uh, many champs on the back. And uh, not much else to go on for the box. I can quickly unbox it. I shall move out the screen quickly while I undo it. The box has been torn slightly because of its age. It's of course 20 years old now. And the car comes in a polystyrene case, uh, case like that and uh, lifting off the lid and then we have the Ferrari 412 T2 driven by Jean Alesi number 27 and a beautiful car it's very seldomly been out of the box because uh, it's not one you want to keep on display really it's, there's no dust on it at all uh, wing mirrors solid as they should be and yeah, it is uh, a real nice car. It, uh, I'm not sure if it's a special edition or something, because uh, there is a version of this car which comes in the normal uh, Mini Chance box, but I'm not sure what the uh, the business is with this, whether it's uh, a dealership version like BMW did with the Williams and BMW cars, I'm not sure. But uh, this ain't bad. The, uh, it keeps it protected anyway, but uh, I do prefer the uh, open side box as well. It saves you having to display it in a cabinet, but never mind really. Um, I will unscrew it from the base, but to uh, do a quick look at the car, uh, not much else to say there. I'll unscrew it from the base and we'll get onto the uh, detailing properly, so uh, back in a moment. Okay, back again. Now, of course, the car removed from its box, and it really shows off the beauty of this car. It is an absolute stunner, and this is really how a Formula 1 car should look. A low nose attached to the front wing, slick tyres, and of course, the 2 metre wide. Uh, track for the car as well, but uh, of course Formula One moves on, and uh, I'm not going to get too much into it. But uh, overall, this is an absolute stunning car, beautifully represented, uh, represented by uh, or replicated by many champs. It's uh, at least in the cockpit, of course. Strength-wise, the car is actually quite strong. This is the front suspension is a bit iffy, as you can sort of see it's a bit loose, but it, uh, it does steer quite nicely. It doesn't, well, it does roll quite well actually. It doesn't scrape the floor. Uh, like like some models do, and uh, of course we've got the gold rims that we miss on Ferrari nowadays. This is how Ferrari should look as well: black wings with a Ferrari red colour, not Marlboro red, but Ferrari red. Something else which is missing from Formula One these days. Also tobacco advertising, but of course this car doesn't have that on uh, at the moment. It just has the uh, the barcode decal, and also the Alesi bar barcode on the on the nose. I just quickly zoom around, sees me moving it. We've got the 27, a very iconic number. An Italian flag on the nose. Of course, the Ferrari badge as well. The Agip fuel, Goodyear tyres. Love the front wing detailing on the back there. Mid wing or barge board in the suspension there. 
very curvy barge board there and nice decals on the side pod there I think this uh, LAC sits a bit low in this car as well I think the uh, no I think it's fine I just thought the, uh, the driver was a bit low in the car but uh, that's not an issue I get to around the back of the car I've got all the air scoops and uh, vents in the uh, back end of the car there back, of the, back end of the bodywork and also look through the rear wing, can't, can't angle the camera very well because it's on a funny tripod but uh, got the diffuser there, of course the rain lights very very nice car it is as well, oh, a nice view over the uh, T-cam there just a shame we can't get a wide angle very well but not to worry but this is an absolute stunning car and it's just a shame that Formula 1 doesn't look like this anymore just love the curve Curve of the cockpit as well, but uh, never mind. We've got the detailing on the rear wing. Got the uh, the uh, whatever these are called. These are uh, small wings on the side. Can't remember what they're called. Uh, Strength-wise, we've done the front suspension. The wing mirrors are f the wing mirrors are quite strong as well. They, they're usually the first things to break off. But not too bad. Decal-wise, this is this car's been in in its box its whole life, so there's no decal peeling at all. But uh, you do get models that turn up with which are nicotine damaged and uh, smoke damaged and really destroys them but this one is absolutely mint and I absolutely only paid £25 for this car as well paid for it, uh, bought it in 2008 and I think the guy was uh, on eBay just wanted a quick sell because he just put it on there to buy it now for £25 and I snapped it up I do not regret, or I regret that purchase at all an absolute stunning car I keep saying that, I know but uh, I am in love with this car. It's just a shame I can't display it very well because if I had an open box, it would, uh, or an open, uh, a clear open box, it would be fine. But uh, not to worry. Uh, of course, this car comes in the Gerhard Berger version as well, the number 28 car. But I think the LAC version is more sought after. Uh, and like I bit said at the beginning, it does come in an open front box as well, the uh, Perspex front, but uh, or well, the plastic front box. But I don't have that one. Uh, I just have the. Uh, I'm not sure if it's dealer edition or just a special edition, I don't know. And there's also another manufacturer made this model as well. The, uh, the, the uh, Onyx company made this car as well for their 118th scale Formula 1 collection. But uh, I, had, I did have that model and it is nothing over this one. It is The proportions are sort of all wrong. The tyres don't even fit on the wheels properly. Uh, the front wing is too high. The cockpit too, is too wide. The uh, airbox is too wide as well. I think the wheelbase is a bit short as well. The only plus side with the Onyx model is that they do have a proper wood plank underneath. If I lift this car over, and you can see just plastic there, the Onyx model does have a, a, a wooden plank on the underside. It adds to detail but it doesn't really, the, the car overall does not compare to this one. This is an absolute stunner and I think there is a glue mark there, I'm not sure. Is it a blemish? Or is it a sticker? I don't know. I don't really care right now. But uh, also nicely sculpted as well. I think there should be a uh, a tongue on the front of the floor there, but I'm not really sure. The way it's moulded into the plastic is quite nice. And of course the front wing detail. Very nice as well. You could probably unscrew the front wing as well from the uh, car as well. Not that I'm going to do that. Uh, turn the thing over. Got some nice decals on this thing. And you can, there are decals available where you can uh, change it to Marlborough, but I'll just leave it as it is because I really don't want to fuck up a car which is probably worth about 90 to to £100 pounds, because I do, do see these pop up now and again, not very often though. Usually you get the, uh, the test version for Schumacher and Irvine with the uh, number one and the shell logos on the side. It's basically Schumacher's car from the pre-season uh, pre 1996 uh, where he drove the car throughout the testing phase and uh, I think he claimed he could win the championship in that car because it was a better handling car than his Benetton but who knows kind of makes you wonder what Ferrari did or, you know what, what they were smoking when they came up with the 96 car because it looked I opinion, my opinion I like the car but overall it, it is a really ugly car compared to this one this is how Formula 1 should look and uh, I stand by that, it's an absolute stunner. I will stay, say that again, it's an absolute stunner. Of course, how a Ferrari should look black wings, Ferrari red colour, gold rims, 
and uh, a driver by the name of, of Alessia at the wheel. And yeah, I will recommend getting hold of this one. I, d I recommended all the models I've reviewed so far, so this is another one. Uh, a few other ones, a few other Ferraris I will review later on. I do have quite a few Ferraris to uh, to review. Uh, this, of course, is the 95 car. We get to 97, 96, 97, 98 all mini champs and then we get to 99 and of course things go downhill quite a bit there because uh, Mattel Hot Wheels took over the rights to the Ferrari name until uh, 2014 actually so uh, 2015 car be interesting I don't know who actually manufactures the 2015 car I think it's is it Barago or something like that uh, I have to look into that one but uh, a mini champs Ferrari is quite well specifically, specifically this one is quite rare um, the 97 car isn't really worth very much and is quite quite easy to get a hold of but this one if you can get a hold of it get it you know don't don't spend too much on it though because uh, it will it will bite you but uh, I do recommend getting hold of this one it does roll very nicely as well it will sit good on any uh, any Formula 1 fans collection it looks good in the cabinet looks good in the box as well <laughs> I can't really display this one because I don't want to get dust on it as soon as this review's over, it goes back in the box and goes back in the cupboard. <coughs> Hence all the dust on the bottom of the box. It is very dusty, but uh, not an issue. Um, but yeah, I will say this car is absolutely stunning. Another quick look around, and I will get gloves. Save me getting fingerprints all over. I do have a proper uh, cloth to clean it off with later on. But I uh, just love the shine of the paintwork as well. As I say, if you've got the Onyx version, bin it because this thing just wipes the floor with it. You've also got the detailing on the rear there, very nicely done. Of course the, the diffuser. Let's have a quick get down to the gearbox. You currently see the gearbox very well. But never mind. I do apologise if my voice is a bit muffled because I've got the hard the, the computers underneath this desk and the, the hard drive is uh, rumbling a bit, or all the graphics cards rumbling a bit, but uh, not much I can do about that, but uh, yeah, I would recommend getting hold of this car. Just a quick look in the uh, cockpit as well, I didn't do that before, but I should should have done that earlier, but uh, quick look in the cockpit, can't see very well, but do have a number of buttons there as well, the, the, the steering wheel has actually collapsed into the driver's lap, he's holding on to nothing, so you got the, uh, the, oh shit, the readout, Focus. There we go. Got a few buttons on the dashboard. Steering wheel's fallen in his lap. I will try and pull that up, but uh, we shall see. I'll probably leave it where it is, but anyway. Zoom back out. And yeah. I would recommend this car. Full stop. Now turn it back round. And yeah, it is an absolute stunner. And it's one I would recommend, so, uh, that's my opinion, that's my review. And now I'll return for another one, but uh, get hold of this car. It will look good anywhere. So, uh, this is Rich, signing off, logging off, and I'll be back for another review later. So, bye for now.